Hey everybody, this is Bridge the Gap, and today we'll be talking about the first step in changing your habits, which is understanding why we have habits in the first place, how your brain works when it comes to habits, and most importantly, how you can change them. Habits are essentially shortcuts for the brain. They allow our brain to put some things on autopilot while you focus on more important tasks. Think about when you first started to drive a car and how much attention, effort, and focus was required to learn how to do it. However, after some time, it got easier and easier to the point to where you rarely have to think about it at all. This is because you have developed driving habits. Now when you drive to work, you don't have to think about all the steps involved with driving the car. You can just think about the multitude of problems that are going on in your life and look for ways to solve them. The brain will try almost anything to make a routine into a habit because habits allow your mind to save energy. For this reason, habits can be extremely helpful The challenge is when we develop bad habits. Bad habits are developed because your brain will do anything it can to get immediate pleasure and avoid pain. As author of Atomic Habits, James Clear put it, What is immediately rewarded is repeated. What is immediately punished is avoided. Think about the example of losing weight. Why do so many people struggle with weight loss? It's because the benefits of losing weight, improved health, increased confidence, and feeling proud of the way you look are not felt immediately. They are felt at the end, not at the beginning. What is immediately rewarded is skipping the exercise to watch TV or eating ice cream instead of something healthy. It is extremely important to recognize that your brain likes things just the way they are. Your brain will do anything in its power to avoid change because, as Tony Robbins put it, your brain is not designed to make you happy. It's designed to help you survive. Your brain looks at change as a jump into the unknown. So rather than take the risk, you would rather just keep things the way they are even when the way it is, is not working. This idea took some time for me to get used to because I always assumed that if I want to make a healthy change in my life, that my mind would want to help me. But there are two parts of your brain at play here, the prefrontal cortex and the limbic system. The prefrontal cortex is the logic and reasoning side of the brain. The limbic system is known as the animal brain and it focuses on survival. When you try to change a habit, these two sides of the brain are in conflict with one another. For example, If you go on a diet and you start to restrict calories, the limbic system will try to get you to eat fatty food because it sees a calorie reduction as a threat, while the prefrontal cortex will try to reason with you to avoid the fatty food. If you're wondering which side often wins, just remember that in Western culture, 66% of us are overweight or obese. And remember the cardinal rule, what is immediately rewarded is repeated. What is immediately punished is avoided. Sadly, the limbic system often wins the battle. Once you understand the battle of the brain, now we can look at how to change these bad habits. Too often when we fail at changing a bad habit, we begin a downward spiral of negative self-talk. I must be just lazy. There must be something wrong with me. I'm a loser. I have no willpower. And on and on. Now ask yourself, is talking this way helpful or harmful? Is it going to improve the situation or make it worse? If you want better results, you need to ask yourself better questions. So one thing you can do is take out a piece of paper and think of a bad habit you're trying to get rid of. James Clear, the author of Atomic Habits, outlined four great questions we can ask ourselves. What can I do to make this bad habit invisible, unattractive, difficult, or unsatisfying? We can try to answer these questions by using porn as an example. Many men have noticed some negative side effects from watching porn and are trying to quit this habit. To make porn invisible, you can install porn blockers on your computer. To make it unattractive, you can visualize the misery this industry causes to women and you can take pride in the fact that you are not a part of it. You can also make it difficult by putting barriers up to watch porn such as reducing computer access or not allowing yourself to use a computer unless others are present. Finally, you can make it unsatisfying by thinking about the potential loving relationships that you may be ruining due to your relationship with porn. If you want to adopt a new positive habit, ask yourself What can you do to make it obvious, attractive, easy, or satisfying? If we use exercise for an example, you can make it obvious by having your exercise gear right next to your bed so you see it first thing when you wake up in the morning. You can make it attractive by only doing exercises that you enjoy. You can make it easy just by doing a workout at home rather than going all the way to the gym. You can make it satisfying by visualizing yourself having an abundance of energy and pride in the way you look. Anytime you're struggling to change a habit, keep these four questions in mind. 
Changing habits is not easy, but you can achieve anything you set your mind to if you believe you can do it. All habits can be changed. Now let's move on to the next stage in the habit cycle, which is making small 1% improvements over time. I put a link to that video below. Thank you for listening.